crew, Mark Hadmaker here. Let's keep talking uh, old school meanness. Why? Because what's more fun than that, right? Let's talk about attacking the buckler. B-U-C-K-L-E-R. So now attacking the buckle. Of course, we can do below the belt stuff, so I guess you can attack, you know, attack beneath the buckle. Um, uh, in some of the, the prior installments here, we've been talking about uh, picking off shots as they come in. Here we're going to talk about something, uh, if we've got something that's not coming in yet, but we're still going to be picking off uh, those arms. But first, let's get some definitions out, out of the way. Uh, I see you waiting in the wings there. you got a few minutes. Uh, a buckler. First off, what is that? Uh, in early you sword play, you would have your weapon in your good hand, and then you would have a short shield in your off hand. And uh, we're going to let this old school tie pad stand in for what that buckler would look like. You're running your arm up through there, you grab it, and you usually have a separate strap right here for the forearm, and you're held to the hands in this position. So this is kind of like your, uh, your, your defending position, get your weapons work coming off this side, where there's gonna be uh, your short sword, uh, your spear, your javelin, uh, yada, 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 go on, right? Right, so that's what the buckler was. It's usually gonna be something in the off side. Now, what does this have to do with empty hand work? Well, in the old days, ye old days, uh, there were so many of the early boxing academies that uh, they kind of uh, combined sword play, uh, quarterstaff work, I mean, just all sorts of old school uh, weapon work in there as well. And in there, there would also be some buckler work. And also, if we take a look and we think about how we had on our little tie pad buckler right here, how when we held it up to defend ourselves fighting with the sword, our arms were up in this position. This is a little nice 90 degree position here. Well, it's no accident because there's only so many ways for the human body to move that whenever you pull up to defend yourself, your arm is kind of already in a buckler position. So when the arm's up in position, sometimes the old school uh, terminology was twin bucklers to get them up there. We've talked about building the box for good defense. Uh, but the actual strategy of attacking the buckler whenever you're talking in sword play or some uh, staff work was actually if someone had, was really good about uh, having nice defense, whether playing nice uh, with uh, uh, whenever they had the buckler and you're fighting them with the staff or they got the short sword, you're going to I can't quite get at them. Sometimes as a distraction, as a feint, or for some, uh, in some cases was frustration, was to actually to wail away on that buckler itself. Now, there's some cases where you're actually using the buckler itself to actually come in and we'll get down to some empty hand versions of that down the road. But to attack the buckler could be feinting and moving it out of the way. So if we were doing sword play work and we actually had a buckler on us, this is what we're doing. But in the empty hand sense, uh, like I said, early boxing academies, James Fig comes to mind and you're using, uh, talking about attacking the buckler, some early fights, I believe uh, Tom Camel Heenan uh, in one of his early fights against Tom Sayers. I mean, there's so many of these guys who are using hand-saving uh, tactics because they're not wanting to bust their hands. It wasn't all this willy-nilly stuff, you know, throwing bare, uh, bare knuckles against skulls and blowing your hands apart. Uh, there is lots of ideas about blowing, you know, getting rid of those arms. We've done that where we talked about incoming. Uh, if someone's staying tight and playing more conservative, like for example, Hanan will just go to work on the arms. And the targets on the arms, I'm sure you can already uh, think of, you're looking for that meaty tricep portion right here. So you're looking for the triceps, pretend I got a mighty tricep. You're looking for the deltoid. I mean, the bicep's great as well, but really forearm's not gonna do you a whole lot of good, but if you hit it, hell, that's okay. There's no, not a problem with that. So uh, the to, a nice way to train it, obviously, is you can work that on your heavy bag. Actually, what we'll do with the heavy bag, I'm not going to swing the camera in and show you this, is if we just, just use chalk. You can just get up there, lean your arm against the uh, the bag on both sides, just kind of chalk out that out outline, and you can work when you're doing some of all your other empty hand stuff, work on attacking in that buckler, banging on the, the appropriate spots where you're looking for that tricep and the deltoid. So I find that's a nice little solo mnemonic work to, uh, to have go with it. Uh, we see attacking the buckler in the, like I said, it was done with weapons work. It was done into the, uh, the uh, bare knuckle era, even all in the glove there. I mean, one of the, my favorite examples of that would be uh, Joe Lewis in his first fight against Lee Ramage in his second fight with him. He clearly dominated him. Mean, he still won the first one, but Ramage was a slick fighter. I mean, he was also playing really conservatively going against the Brown Bomber, as you might. Uh, he came back to his corner. I forget which round it is. I'm going to ballpark it today. Don't quote me on that. Uh, and he says, I just can't get to him. To which uh, 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 Jack Blackburn, his coach, says, well, he got arms, ain't he? Which was pretty much saying in the next round, he went out and he had him just wail away against those twin bucklers. So it got to where at some point those arms droop and or whenever they're firing out, they're firing out with less alacrity, less uh, power on them. Now, since we're primarily talking a street or old school frontier rough and tumble, we don't have the benefit of going, oh, I'm gonna work on his arms early and attack the buckler, so maybe there's gonna be less stink on him by the time we get to uh, the fifth and sixth round. 
Th that's not what we're looking for. We want to kind of blow them out earlier, right? Right. So I'm going to give you about to four or five different ways to attack the buckler. Uh, uh, and then hopefully we're going to make them go a little bit meaner where we can use them immediately. And keep in mind, when you are attacking the buckler, it's not a shot that you're going to like, bang, and hit that deltoid and pull back and go, you give? It's not going to be that. Again, this is that whole buckshot frontier idea where you're just throwing everything in there. There's rapid turnover of shots and making things happen. Hey, Kylie, can I bring in here, please? Grab your buckler, please. Throw it on that left arm. And again, it doesn't matter what side it's on. It can be left, right. You can hit both sides of the buckler. And again, this isn't our main focus. Again, we're not looking at going, if there's a good target available and you can go straight down the middle and hit it. You're not going to avoid that. We're talking about if everything's all nice and tight and you're gonna go, you don't have to wait for shots, you don't have to faint shots out of the way, you're gonna go ahead and just hit no matter what. Your job is just to hit and go, and we're trying to open up our eyes to, you know, hitting all the time is good to go, right? Right. I'll put you on this side, please. Now, it makes sense that uh, one of the prime ways to hit a buckler for facing off, if you and I are facing one another, you're wanting to hit my buckler, whether, you know, since I'm a southpaw, you might really want to go off of this, uh, this uh, deltoid, uh, this uh, tricep, if I switch around orthodox, you might be looking for this, and I'm being one of these guys who's really all nice and tight, you're wanting to hit and blow it away, so it makes sense, we've got this all set up, just throw yourself some nice little short chopping hooks, and again, don't pay attention to any form right here, right now, we're just talking about getting the idea of what we're looking to hit, so when you've got good hook form, sure, throw those against it, but keep in mind, uh, we don't have the benefit of long rounds for what we're talking about, uh, street and rough and tumble, getting the job done uh, more quickly. The other thing, so we don't want to go, hmm, I mean, hitting is a nice distraction with that, just throwing a standard hook for us, so we might hit that buckler to frog up, come in high, and if they're still covering up, we're just saying you don't have to try and get in and under over those elbows. You can just still keep banging on those, uh, on, on those muscles, so their strikes, their defense goes down. If, if he even goes to grappling, God forbid, that there's less stink and less hanging on with that, uh, with their actual uh, grappling hooks that they've got. Now, standard hook is going to work for you just fine, but some other ideas is that you're going to sometimes be off base with it. Uh, instead of throwing the straight fist on it, find sometimes two different things to give you that horizontal angle out of it would be throwing kind of a variation of Battling Nelson's hook. Okay, we're not gonna, we'll get into Battling Nelson's uh, uh, a digging hook. Uh, uh, later on, but right now this is just basically just closing your fist as you normally would and our striking surface is just going to be in the, this inside of the, of the fist right here. So it's like the reverse of a, a hammer fist. The thing is, I would just drop that thumb out of the way, get a bit more of a flat surface. Because Why? Because if you're going to get to where you're working on your heavy bag or whatever, you start really uh, uh, torquing out that knuckle right there. So kind of flatten it up. So you're going to make your fist and then kind of peel that down a little bit. So whenever you're doing your exact same, let me get you more flush like this. Uh, whenever we're doing this, we get the same exact sort of shot. So we're talking about maybe save your fist, uh, work that on the bag, kind of the, that uh, fake the battling Nelson hook. And this is, position is important. We'll get to that in just a few moments. The same thing for the hor horizontal position. We've talked about the chopper. Remember we did the chopper on a, in a recent video. Well, we can turn that back over that hammer fist. It's going to be a short chop right in here. <laughs> that same sort of position. We're moving back in, banging on that muscle. And again, it's not one thing. Clearly we're looking at we want to continue on and backing them down until they trip over the curb or something like that and then stomp them down, right? Right. So it's going to be overwhelming uh, offense as you keep moving down the line. So we get you know, the standard hooking. We're going to do that inside variation out of a, of a battling Nelson. We can also hit this position here. But let's also talk about flank angles, meaning if we're talking mass attack, multiple assailants, more than one, uh, some of the things that you would see in the sport version attacking the buckler was actually doing sliding straights. I mean, if you and I were facing each other and I thought, God, you got really good. I've been throwing a few hooks against your buckler. You're getting wise to me on there. So sometimes I, I might take a sliding step to the outside and throw a stiff jab or a, a slight shift to the outside. I'm throwing a, a nice uh, uh, a short shot to the muscles, but just kind of sliding out and make those happen. But again, for the street, that doesn't really make any sense. We don't have to do that. But those straight shots can make sense for us if we're kind of making them out of the, the, the flanking material. So meaning uh, I'm facing you, but your butt and you and I are having some words, which I don't why would we do that? We're friends, right? But you've got a friend, uh, your friend is here on my flank as well. And maybe I've got a shoulder presented, so while I'm talking to you, my straights might just come right out of my stance. If I, if I don't want to bust, waste my hands on skull, face, and jaw, uh, 
uh, structure, I might look for those buckler real quick, uh, real quick as in coming in on top of something. So my straights out of this position will work just fine for me. Uh, another idea out of there, out of that flank position, I think is a little more, uh, it's nothing slick about it, but just a little more wisdom for it. Instead of you having to turn your entire body so I can stay facing the whole time as you slide up this way a little bit for me right here, right here, turn like this. So we've got someone, so we see that would be her buckler. She's standing like this. She might have her hands and she might be giving me a little bit of this. So you're, you're giving me the business. You're giving me the words. I'm getting words here and I'm getting words here. So when we're up in this, I've got already one buckler shot here. Maybe I got my follow-up, but maybe it's just enough to, you know, if I catch a jaw. And again, all these back, I mean, these things we're doing, if it catches face, that's fine. If you're catching the deltoid, that's great. Biceps is great. We're being none choosy. We're just trying to make sure that we're doing lots of things all the time and make sure the main thing to get out of this is the buckler is on the table at all times. Now, we've talked about that, uh, that tactical torch position, whether we've got it up at, at this display position right here, tactical position, or the standard, hey, I'm looking for my car keys position. Uh, same thing, when it's used as a fist load, whenever it's punched, whatever side it's punched to, that makes it fine. So if it's punched to this side, that little, I'm gonna take it out so I don't uh, uh, ruin this too much. But whenever I'm giving that little battling Nelson shot, all my battling Nelson shots with that in there, we're talking about, we're focusing that power down there, kind of a little bit of an impalement going on with it. That's, that's just Jim Dandy. If it's punched out the other side of the fist right here, then I've got it turned right back over into, uh, I've got it turned over into that little uh, short chopping uh, uh, hammer fist position there. And then with the short I mean, straights, doesn't come in quite as tight for you, no big deal. But that's the other beauty about always having a legal fist load, as it were, something practical like this. But it's all even the same thing. You can take just a standard ballpoint pen. You can leave the cap on it uh, if you want, but just kind of give it some stability and you know, stick it out to either side. Whenever you're doing this, when you're hooking it, up, you hit like that, and I just popped a big hole and go ahead and get out of here, champ. <laughs> popped a big hole into it. Our job is whatever you've got. If you make your arsenal and your uh, fist attack the exact same way that you would if you put your load in your hand, for example, the uh, the ballpoint pen, the tactical torch, what have you, and attack the buckler. Clearly, it gets all the more, uh, 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 a lot more utility to it. And to keep in mind, and Sister Nun Choosy, let's say I turned around, I missed, oh, I caught him in the throat, and I was going with the buckler. Mm. Clearly, we're talking about street work right here, so this all matters. I mean, if you're going to puncture a human being, that's it. Again, the main thing to get out of this is that clearly they're more vital targets. But whenever someone's up in great uh, defensive position, since there's a scoring system in, in most striking sports or uh, 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 grappling sports, everything's got a scoring system to it. And those are the things we want to get to. So we've learned to cover up those positions. And I think the sport of mentality kind of blends over and we think, oh, I've got to get to these when actually old timers for their sport and even probably more so for the uh, street is to go, whatever's there, if they're covering up, that's the part you're going to attack. So attacking the buckler as a strategy is a wise way to go. Thanks for watching our video lessons here at TRS Direct. Hit the like button down below and consider subscribing to our channel here on YouTube. Hit the bell icon and we'll send you a notification when there's a new lesson available. Thanks again for watching.